One of the goals of the It's Our Air video series is to present a variety of viewpoints on air quality issues in North Carolina. All the opinions expressed in this program are the personal views of the student participants and interviewees, and not necessarily those of the North Carolina Department of Environment and Natural Resources Division of Air Quality, any other state government office, or any of the sponsors of this program. It's up there. You know, the atmosphere. You see the clouds, you feel the weather, but there are things you don't see. Gases, pollution. Those things can affect you too. It's time to take a deep breath and figure it all out because it's our air. It's our air, but what do we really know about it? We know we can't live without it for more than a few minutes, but do we really understand how it works or what it takes to keep it in good shape? Hey, thanks for coming up to the rooftop. Understanding air can be tricky. I mean, you can't see it, you can't touch it, and it's filled with harmful pollutants invisible to the naked eye, like that one. <laughs> in order to understand air and air pollution, we're gonna have to visualize and think abstractly. And it's important because your very survival depends on it. So let's start with the basics. We know that air isn't nothing, so it must be something. And logically, if it's something, it must consist of matter. Who remembers the basic states of matter? Solid. Solid. Liquid. Liquid. Gases. Gases. Plasma. Plasma, yes, but that only occurs at extremely high temperatures, all of which would kill us here on the rooftop. So we're not gonna consider that, but thanks for playing. <laughs> so, is air a solid, liquid, or gas? Gas. Yes. Wrong? <laughs> it's a trick question. Air is a mixture of gases. And that mixture has some very important properties that we're gonna to need to understand if we're gonna understand air and air pollution. For example, we know that air has volume because it takes up space. Like the air taking up space in a glass and keeping the water from filling it up. And we know it's got mass or weight, which is why a bottle filled with air weighs more than the same bottle without air in it. But air also has pressure. You guys have been in a car before, right? You've at least seen a car, you can spell car, something like that. You know a car has tires. Clearly one of you is gonna have trouble getting home. <clears throat> but this tire has air pressure, and maybe you've even had a bicycle and filled the tire yourself. But what is air pressure? Air pressure is the force exerted by the weight of air molecules on any surface they contact. In the atmosphere, because the air is all around us, air pressure is pressing on everything uniformly from all directions. And it's not just pressure from the air that objects contact directly. All the air in the atmosphere above us is pressing down on the air below it, and ultimately on objects near the Earth's surface. Kind of like layers and layers of blankets. If you were only under the top layer, it wouldn't be so much pressure. But underneath all of them, you really start to feel it. At sea level, our atmosphere exerts a pressure of 14.7 pounds per square inch. A regular sheet of paper is 93.5 square inches. So our atmosphere is exerting 1,000 374 pounds of air pressure on this sheet of paper from all sides. That's the weight of the average cow. The reason the paper isn't crushed, we're not crushed, or anything on the surface of the earth isn't crushed, is equilibrium. Solids and liquids are incompressible, which means they exert the same pressure when uniform pressure, like air pressure, is pressed upon them. Also, we have air in our lungs, pressing on the inside of our lungs to balance out the air pressure from the outside. Now, back to the air pressure in our tires. What do you say we go do a demonstration on air pressure and help you start visualizing some of these concepts that we've talked about? Yeah. For this demonstration, I've given you all a garbage bag. These are gonna be tires in our car and we're gonna see how they push up. I know you guys were all hoping for trick or treat bags, but tis not to be. Take your bag and put them flat on the table if you would. All right, Alex and Chris, if you could flip that table over and put it on top. 
All right, let's see if we can line it up. That's actually pretty good. So the top table is our car, the bags are our tires, and the bottom table is the road. So right now, we've got some pretty flat tires. I think we can all agree that there is no air in them. The weight of our car and air pressure is keeping our car on the ground. All right, if you all kneel down, find the end of your bag, and you're gonna blow these up like you're blowing up a balloon. Now, some of you have already started to notice that the table started to come up off of the other table. The top table is levitating. And that's because as you blow air into the contained space inside the tires, that air is exerting pressure on everything it touches, right? And that's the inside of your tires. When that contained pressure becomes greater than the pressure from the outside air and the weight of the table, the air in the tires pushes the car up. That's actually really good. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, this table doesn't seem very heavy. <laughs> nice. Stabilize the table. Go. All right. On the count of three. All right. Ready? One. You don't think it's going to work? All right, go ahead. I feel like Aladdin. And now our car is getting better gas mileage and polluting less because its tires are inflated properly. <laughs> air pressure also changes with temperature. When air is heated, it expands, making it less dense. In a closed container, that will increase the air pressure on the inside of the container. But in the atmosphere, where the air can expand freely, as the air is heated, it becomes less dense and rises, and the air pressure becomes lower. Another way that we can visualize the effects of hot air rising is to see how it can cause this carousel to spin. This also illustrates another important property of air. It's a fluid. How can a mixture of gases be a fluid? It's not a liquid. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking fluid, liquid. Aren't fluid and liquid, aren't those the same thing? Well, a lot of people think those words can be used interchangeably. But scientifically speaking, fluid and liquid are not the same. All liquids are fluids, but not all fluids are liquids. A fluid can be a liquid or a gas, and is a substance whose molecules move freely past one another without a separation of mass, and which easily yields to pressure. A fluid has the tendency to assume the shape of its container. Basically, a fluid flows, and air definitely flows. It flows around buildings, it flows over sand dunes, it flows past me and you every day. So air is a fluid and it flows. The problem is that we've established that we can't see air. Fortunately, we have our old friend the fog machine to do a little demonstration on how fluids flow. Alex, if you would be so kind as to have a seat and the rest of us just keep our fingers crossed that this doesn't go horribly, horribly wrong. All right, Tyreek, whenever you're ready, blast the fog. As you can see, the fog is flowing around Alex. You can see it even better in slow motion. Air is a fluid. Fluids flow. You seem unharmed. So, now we understand some of the properties of air. And we know that air is a mixture of gases. But do we know which gases make up the air we breathe? And of those gases, which ones are the most prevalent? Let's ask some random folks and find out what they think. What are the gases that make up the air? The gases that make up the air. Yeah. Oxygen, carbon dioxide, hydrogen. I probably know some of them, but not all of them. Oxygen, um, hydrogen, probably. Carbon dioxide. Uh, carbon monoxide and oxygen. Carbon, yeah, mon monoxide and oxygen, I guess. I'm not sure. Oxygen. Okay. Carbon dioxide. Hydrogen. Nitrogen. I guess nitrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen, maybe. Um, oxygen, carbon monoxide, nitrogen. I don't know. There's Is it like carbon dioxide or something like that? And oxygen? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We're guessing. Which gas makes up over three fourths of the air by volume? I know it's not oxygen. I'm thinking it might be hydrogen. I'm guessing either oxygen or carbon monoxide, one of those. Mm. Is it nitrogen? 
hydrogen. Let's just guess nitrogen. Almost carbon dioxide. But do you want to guess that? Sure. Is there a final <laughs> answer? I would say, well, oxygen is what we breathe, so I'm thinking that, but carbon dioxide? Maybe? That's what I was thinking. <laughs> It's actually nitrogen. Oh. I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> nitrogen does indeed make up the vast majority of our atmosphere. A whopping 78% of our air is nitrogen. Oxygen is the runner-up at 21%. And everyone seems to forget about poor argon, which makes up just less than 1% at 0.9%. Carbon dioxide and hydrogen end up being just two of a number of gases that make up the remaining 0.1%. So despite what many people think, carbon dioxide and hydrogen make up only a tiny fraction of our air. And even though nitrogen is the main ingredient by a long shot, all the others are vitally important, even if they're only in relatively small amounts. We couldn't breathe without oxygen, and plants would die without carbon dioxide. Every gas that makes up our air has a purpose, and needs to be there in its correct proportion for our air to function properly, even those measured in parts per billion. And there's something else up there in our air that's equally vital. Water. Sometimes in the mysterious form of invisible water vapor, and sometimes as clouds. But we'll talk more about the water in our air in part two of this video. Right now, it's your turn to do the demos to understand these concepts better. So go do them. Just go. Stop watching me. I'm done. I'm out of here. Ha, ha, ha.